Welcome. So what are, what are your names? So I'm Miko. I'm Elijah. Thank you for being here, both of you. So we have a u- unique interview ahead of us because we have we have two people here, if, if not everyone has seen this. Uh, <laughs> and you two are the first couple that, um, that I'm interviewing for the project. What pronouns do you both accept or use? Um, for me, I use he, they, them. It also just kind of depends on how I feel and what I'm looking like that day. Um, as a performer, I find that sometimes I have alter egos, so, but predominantly he, them, they. Is there one set of pronouns that you seem to lean more towards? Yeah, or? I guess, um, everyday life, I le- I turn, tend to lean more to like male pronouns. So he, him, his, I, I tend to lean more that way just in my everyday life, but it, it's a constant... So in this interview, um, whenever possible, I should use he, him pronouns for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, you, if, that's, if I'm usually presenting that way. Okay. Yeah. So I know it's different for... Yeah. Tell me which pronouns you use or accept, Elijah. Um, I accept he, him, his, they, them, their. Um, I, I, there's been different times that I've used all sorts of pronouns. Is there ever a time that you would be uh, upset, insulted, if someone asked you your pronouns? Uh, for me, it's it's actually a relief. I'm like, oh, you know, for me, it's like I don't get offended by it because I know that my gender is pretty, you know, my voice sometimes gives me away. Um, but I actually find it refreshingly good that they were thoughtful enough to ask. And Elijah? Um... I love it when people ask. It, some, it like, it's also like context or like what environment, what space I'm in. Um, and I, I definitely love that question a lot more than like, what are you? How long have you been using your pronouns and how long have you two been together? For my pronoun, I've been identifying this way for like the better half of six years uh, in terms of just more he, his, him, them, or, and, and then uh, previously before that I had identified as say them when I was trying to figure it out. Um, but. Yeah, yeah, I've been using they, them, um, like I'm 35 and like when I was about like, I don't know, I think like 19 or something when I actually discovered there was like here's this vocabulary that I was searching for and, and like um, was experimenting with like Z and stuff like that, um, but like they, them, they're this is much more approachable for people, at least it was already in the vocabulary. So that was something that I started using a bit off and on, and then was like in the closet for a long time, and then started using it again um, for a couple of, like for a couple of years, and then I started using he, him, his more exclusively for a while, but then it was like, that's still there. Um, so they, them, there has, has like come back more into that as part of my and then we've been together a year and was it like three? Two, two months now a year and two months, yeah, like a year and two months. just had her two months i think yeah the yeah, 28th yeah. so yeah a uh, year and two months um and i've definitely loosened a bit on the he his him and started just kind of being more comfortable with accepting they them uh after a lot of conversations about you know your gender fluidity it just kind of made sense where it's like I don't want my gender to be so rigid either like I am somewhere in between so yeah yeah and and I think for me it's been really great being with a partner um, who who has understanding about gender fluidity and, Mm -hmm. and it's like able to talk about it and that I can be more myself so I don't have to like be more feminine I don't have to be more masculine I don't have to be like a specific thing or what is appealing to them that I can just like, yeah. here it is, take it, <laughs> take it or leave it. One thing I make a point to tell them is whatever you're feeling that day, just do it because I'm going to love you no matter what, because it'll just be you regardless of if you want to throw some makeup on or not, like whatever you want to do, I will love you. Yeah, so. same thing. <laughs> it's great <laughs> that we can like sit and put our makeup on together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I asked you guys which pronouns I should use for you, and both of you said, in, at least in this interview, we should use he/him pronouns. Mm -hmm. But you keep referring to each other as they. So, well, I, I think it's I. I just refer to like a lot of people as they. Just like they is such a part of my vocabulary that, or people that I don't know that well, acquaintances, or I, I'll just use they. It's <laughs> it's part of my vocabulary. This yeah. kind of thing with fluidity is like I've spent majority of my life trying to like fit in fit or just be like okay this fluid thing pin it down <laughs> yeah. i've kind of created a rule in my head when i'm unsure just don't assume just say they them until they correct you otherwise your names are miko and elijah have you always gone by those names no no um <laughs> tell been, me tell me no. about uh the the journey of where you might have come to those names and what they represent to you now. Uh, I've I've gone by a lot of different names, <laughs> and um, and I think like going by Elijah, um, that's been something that well my like given middle name is Eliza, and so I I love that name Eliza. I might actually take that on at some point, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, so it is, is close to that name, but it was a more masculine form of that name. And I went by Eli for a long time, but people keep saying Ellie. So I was like, no, Elijah, boom. Yeah, my name, I had the most feminine name as my dead name. And I just, I, I love my grandmother because I was named after my grandmother, but I'm like, no. Um, I used to go by... Mel actually for a, a while because it was a shortened version of my dead name and then I started hearing about a lot of folks transitioning and I really like the name Nico but I love the letter M because I wanted to keep elements of my birth name just because it, it was still like it's still part of who I was but it's just different um, and so Miko was kind of a fun, I mean, honestly, it was a raccoon from Pocahontas, and I just thought that was a funny character. But then I also like that it could go either way, where it could be a feminine name, but also a masculine name. You said dead name. I have not heard that before, but it totally makes sense. So can you tell me what dead name means? So dead name is, um, for specifically for trans folk, is a name that they were given at birth, but that they no longer associate with. Um, so it's really important to, if you know somebody's dead name, not to say it, because if they pronounce that name as their dead name, that means they no longer want to be called that. Um, so that, that's, that's something that a lot of people don't want other people to know, particularly when that transitions. So a lot of us just kind of call it our dead name. And I've officially changed my name, so it is a dead name. It's no longer a name I associate with. So that's where that term comes from. Yeah, I have not legally changed my name or gender marker yet, but yeah, that's definitely something. And for people who, if they know that you have a dead name, to bring it up in conversation, like, oh, hey, I know your dead name, or just to talk about it, it's like, no, no, don't do it. You just don't bring just don't it do up. It. Just, just, just don't. Yeah, if, it, if it's been pronounced as a dead name by the person, then you're not allowed to use it. Yeah. Just how much responsibility do you think should be put on others to ask pronouns or for you to tell others? Yeah, so I, I think it should be other people's responsibility just because um, for like a lot of trans folks and like gender queer folks, like, like non-conforming folks, that is a lot of energy, it's a lot of work to talk to every single person. Um, it, it just never ends. and. So it's, it takes a lot of energy to do that. So the more that other people can step in and just ask general questions in groups or to individuals, it's, it helps share the work. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel race plays into gender identity and acceptance of someone's gender? And go ahead and maybe both of you answer that question. Um, for me, it plays a huge role in terms of my Latino culture. They just don't really understand it. Um, like there's certainly different things throughout our culture they're a little bit more lax in terms of just letting me be me which has been really great specifically for my family uh, but it, they in the latino culture it's very rigid it's very you're female or you're male there is no they 
when they refer to folks in the they pronouns, it's always masculine um, because it's a heavily masculine dominated culture. I get frustrated sometimes in the Latino language because I'm like, why does everything have to end you know, in a masculine pronoun? Why can't we use feminine? We've got strong Latino women who are deserving of, you know, all the all the credit, but we're still going to use these masculine pronouns, you know. So it, it, it's a struggle that I, I see a lot, too, especially coming from speaking English as well. It's so vast in the vocabulary. So it, it gets frustrating sometimes. And I think a, kind of a newer generation of Latino-American kids that are growing up here in the culture um, have really started to question why do we do that and how can we change it and Latinx is kind of like the first word that I've heard that's just come about about this kind of new like hey you know let's let's come up with a different word that describes more accurately what we're trying to say. What message or advice might you have for youth who might be questioning their gender identity and for parents who have children who would be questioning their gender identity? It's, it's okay that you're questioning or that you don't have answers and um, and just to like keep reaching out to people who do understand or, or like people that you think understand um, and don't give up. Yeah. Just do, do not give up. It gets better. Um, just be yourself and experiment. Be comfortable because this is the time to figure it out. And if you want to put makeup on, it's okay. And I think to parents, I think it's really important that you give your space, your children room to experiment and figure out who they are. Um, I feel like a lot of parents just think that they have to be rigid. You know, I think your role as a parent is to allow your child to become the human that they're going to be. And you have to allow space for that. And sometimes it's not going to be what you want it to be. And that's okay. That also, that's what comes with being a parent is you're growing a human and they're not going to have the same perspective that you had. And you have to allow space for that to be okay. And you have to also be okay with it. Um, just because they're going to be who they're going to be regardless of what you do. It's just a matter later on, do you want to have a relationship with your child or not? Because either way, they're going to do what they need to do for themselves. You know, you're going to be just fine. If you're a kid that doesn't know where you stand, you're going to be fine. You know, that was a lot of worry with me too as a kid. I'm a singer, you know, transitioning. It's scary, but you'll make it. You always do.